Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. With the Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Having It All podcast the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome to today's bonus episode of the podcast. I hope you are having a truly fantastic day. I'm I'm hoping that magic is just raining down because you are creating stuff all over the place like that's how I feel right now today's just been one of those absolutely incredible days and I am excited to bring you today's conversation that hopefully can can uh, help influence and inspire some magic in your life so yesterday on the podcast I published an episode called a deep dive into my number one tool for radical self-growth the your day balance game And in yesterday's episode, that's what I did. I went deep on just sharing with you what the Your Day Balance game is, what it is, what it's all about, all the different, not all of them, because there's a lot of different facets of the game, but many of the different facets of the game. And I talked about how that tool has been really a catalyst for so much growth and so much healing in my life over the past seven years. And today I'm bringing you a conversation that I had with the founder of the Your Day Balance Game, Mr. Day Adioba. And Day and I sat down and we really dug into the question, what does having it all mean? You know, and that question is at the heart of this podcast. Obviously, the podcast is called Having It All. So it's a question that you can ask yourself, you know, what does having it all mean to you? And Day and I have a really fantastic conversation all about what it looks like to live an abundant, loving life. And what you'll see is so much of that is connected to the principles and the ideas that are behind and within the Your Day Balance game. So it is a really awesome conversation. I love any opportunity I have to sit down behind the mic with Day. He is a, a brilliant guy, and we have a lot of fun together. And, and you, you'll just, you could tell he and I just, just, can go on and on talking about this stuff for so, so long. So I'm very excited about this. This is my tandem episodes all about the Your Day Balance game. And my intention for you is that, you know, I can introduce you to the tools that I have used in my life to really help me become the man I am today, to help me step into my greatness, step into my purpose, walk my path of purpose, gain confidence, heal some of the fears and traumas and stories about me that were not true and all that stuff and just show up more powerfully and in control of my life. And there's been a lot of tools that have helped me do that, but the Order Balance game has really been that, that, uh, that, that top one and um, the source of, of so many amazing things, so many magical moments. So that's my intention, just to introduce this to you and you know, I hope you have a, a really fantastic time listening to this conversation and that you walk away with a, a different perspective about potentially having it all for yourself, what that might look like, and just walk away with some tools and ideas that you can put in your back pocket and use as you create magical moments in your life. So that is my wish for you, and I'm complete. No more talking for me. So without further ado, here's my conversation with De Adioba. De Adioba, what does having it all mean to you? 
That is a great question. And that's transformed over the years, Matthew, as I worked with a lot of extraordinary players, executive CEOs, actors, athletes, NFL, NBA, um, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, Blue Cross Blue Shield. I've had opportunity to sit side by side with all these extraordinary players and not only see their life, but see the back office. You know, show up in their homes, go into their condos or boats and really see what it looks like to have it all. And so what I was really looking for, Matthew, wasn't what they had. I was really looking for how they experienced everything they had. And that's what having it all to me is. It's not just what I have. It's how I experience what I have. And I experience it in a very powerful way because I can have a bowl of rice and sit on that corner and have it all. Kind of like Eckhart Tohar did, you know. I think he sat on the bench for a couple of years and then from that became everything you know about a new earth and everything. Yeah. Gave everything up. So having it all to me, if I had to really make it succinct, I would say, and this is what I teach and this is what I share with all you guys and this is why the game is designed the way it's designed, is to create PC profitable players who are purposeful. And to me, that's having it all. That I'm coming from a principle centered, and that's what PC is coming from a principle centered connection flow lifestyle. And I'm using that level of alignment to generate production, profit, whatever I want to call profit. It could be 50,000 a year, it could be 5, 10 million a year, it could be 100 million a year, whatever that is for you. But you create that profit from your ability to handle it. You don't create it from your ability to want it and want more. You measure your ability to handle it through your health and fitness. So anytime I take on new team members, have children, whatever, anytime I take something on, my body registers it as responsibility, i.e. stress. And so if I'm not paying, paying attention in real time to my ability to handle it, then I keep getting driven by the success and then other people start helping me get the success. And this is what I've seen with so many successful people I've trained is that your success creates such momentum that you cannot deal with it in a healthy way. And that's when they come see me. So having it all is the person or persons who is able to really relate to their stress from a very high level of self-mastery and then create abundance both internally and externally. So once again, I call that PC, PC generated profit. That means you're generating your profit from being very aligned with principles. And that's why people come to you because you teach people how to become principle centered. That's where you got certified in this game is to become a principle centered coach. And that's what a lot of people might not know fully, but that's what you're great at. And so once people understand, because most people don't even understand that conversation, and if they want to get their minds wrapped around that, they're going to have to go to Seven Habits as well and start reading that book. So you start getting an idea of the difference between spouse-centered, family-centered, principle-centered, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so PC-centered profit, that's purposeful. Because once you make that profit, the question is, how does it serve your family? How does it serve your community? And how does it serve your world? He or she who's able to live that lifestyle at a high level is having it all to me. I dig that. I mean, that's 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 what I'm playing for personally. Absolutely, absolutely. So, t- tell me, what does it look like? Because either in your life or in in some of the folks that you work with, like, what does it look like when you are off of that? When you are more focused on the P, when you're letting that PC side go, uh, or when that purpose piece is missing entirely. All kind of vistas and art is painted when that is off. That's the majority of people. Most people don't even know what principle centered is. Okay, well then, why don't you just? What I, I want you to describe that in your own words, because I know I've probably read like a passage from um, Seven Habits in an episode before, and it's in Covey's voice. What is principled centered? Because you said it a bunch of times. What is it? What is it coming from your perspective? You know, and I'm going to keep circling it back to what you do because this is what you do. You teach people how to do this, whether it's consciously or unconsciously. When they work with you, this is what they'll eventually learn how to become because you're now principle-centered. That's what you learned over the last 
How many years have you been playing now? Man, like I think five and a half years. Yeah, yeah. So you live a principle-centered life. So to communicate to your listeners, principle-centered means you understand the difference between principles and values. First of all, if you don't understand that distinction, then you can't live a principle-centered life if you don't understand the distinction. You know, you live in a value-centered life. And many of us are taught how to live a value-centered life. It's called yeah. I value family. Or we aspire to. Yeah, and that's the highest level, which is cool. I mean, there's just another level above it. Yeah. That's all there is. So a value-centered is usually the pinnacle of lifestyles that I train. Most of them were value-centered. It takes a very, very astute, wise, like going for it all person to live a principle-centered life and really understand that. So if we refer back to the seven habits, you know, he talks about different centers, and that's why I highly recommend that listeners refer back to. He talks about the different centers, and he says, depending on what center you have at the core of your life, whether it's spouse, family, church, enemy. enemy. Enemy is another center that people use. Another way to look at enemy center is is your rival. You know, you notice a lot of people, like whether it's sports or whatever, boxing, a lot of what they do, they're always thinking about their rival, yeah. and it drives their whole life. So that's what enemy, enemy center is, almost like your rival. A lot of times in sports, you look at them as your enemy or your rival. Nevertheless, when you have your center, whatever those centers are, it creates the four governors. You get your security off of it. That means you feel great if you beat them. You don't feel great if you don't. You get your wisdom off of it. The way you see life, your balanced perspective on life comes from whatever your center is, whether it's family, fighting, whatever. Like all life is boxing. All life is family. Uh, also, your guidance, you know, your, your ability to choose comes from that center. And last, your power, your ability to act when it's time to move. Like, for instance, if things are not going well with your spouse, you might feel a little depressed. You might not feel like moving and going to work that day, whatever. There's many different things that guide you and govern you depending on your center. Principle-centered rides above all that. So first thing is to understand the distinction between value-centered and principle-centered. So a couple of principles are, we always go over those principles in the game because there's several principles in life, universal principles. And a couple of the principles that we, we talk about is health supports life or the PPC balance is the precursor to longevity. And these are not so obvious until we say them. So when we talk about health supports life, we're saying that which is healthy will promote life. That which is not will end life. It's that simple. It doesn't need any debate. So That's when why I love that it's a principle. Because you can't, you can't argue against that. You could try, but you're just gonna. It's kind of like you're hitting your head against a wall because that which which supports life, which is healthy, supports life. It's like, of course. Yeah, it has nothing to do with how you see it, how I see it, a value difference, a perspective difference. It's just no. If you promote health, you will promote life. If you yeah. don't, you won't. It's simple. So that's what a principle is. It's a universal law that governs us all to a more effective way of living. That means when you align with it, you'll find life will move more powerfully, more effortlessly. When you don't, you're swimming upstream. You have to work a lot harder. That's it. Mm -hmm. So it's to understand those principles like health supports life, the PPC balance, the precursor longevity. That one's pretty much saying that if you take full responsibility for your health, the PC, production capability, and the P, the profit, you take full responsibility for your wealth, then you'll typically go longer. Someone doesn't have to shore you up on the health side and take care of you like doctors. And someone doesn't have to show you up and take care of your, your finances and your food and all that stuff like philanthropic giving and stuff because you can create that as well. So are you creating both sides? When you do that, you tend to go longer. The PPC balance is a precursor to yeah. longevity. So living your life according to those principles, that means you let those govern you. And then from that, your values take second seat to those. And you learn how to wrap your values around that. So you asked me a question earlier. What does it look like when people get off that? Most people are not principle-centered. So it looks like this. It looks like if they come in here and they start training with me, and I'm like, listen, right now we've done great running, exercising, eating well. However, your career is not serving you. I know it's serving your pocket. It's cranking out that money. Yeah. You're a millionaire right now. You got 10 cars. You got this and that. But it's not aligned with who you are. And it doesn't really serve your greater self. It serves your egoic self. So principal center would say, okay, I'm going to surrender my career, whatever the case may be, to live 
according to my truest self, my highest self, and figure out how to create wealth from there. But most people have never thought like that, and it's a scary thing because you have everything banking on this this act that you've created, this career that you're great at, but it's not really fully aligned with who you are because it's costing you your health. It's costing you your peace right there. That's why we can only get so far in training because this thing you keep buttoning up against called whatever you're doing, it's not really making sense to you. It's not really serving a bigger purpose to you anymore. There's a lot of things that that inform you that you're not aligned with your highest selves. And typically when you align with principles, they lead you to your highest self. One of the things I've heard you talk about um, just in our, our own conversations is that a lot of times when a person will jump in with a coach, in your case, like with a trainer, they'll make a lot of progress early on. And then they hit that thing that is truly keeping them stuck. So I imagine you've, you've had so many examples of people who just get in and they're like all amped up to start working on their physical self and they'll be moving and doing those things. And then they hit that spot where it's like, it's very evident that the, the fact that they're sitting in a, in a career in a focused on their P and it's totally misaligned and you know, they've been sacrificing all those other things or giving up all those other things. It's like, now it's time to address this. Well said, you know, a lot of us, we're just driven by our values. And the thing about values is it can serve us until it stops serving us. You see, dig into that because there's a number of folks on the line right now who are listening, who are like, wait a minute, Matthew's been working with me on my values. So uh, why are we doing this type of work? Ooh, that's huge. That's huge. Because a lot of our values are not governed or are aligned with principles. They're just aligned with society, our religions, what people say, what our family says. And after a while, you might realize it's not working for you. How do you know it's not working for you? You haven't hit this state of peace, this joy that comes from a greater source that's consistent. And a lot of people say that in their religion until I see it in their health. They, they, it's almost like a denial. They're like, yes, when I'm connected to God, I, I have this. I'm like, then why are you not healing? If you're that connected, why are you not healing? Like, it's like it calls them on their bluff. So yeah, to me, sure. truly being connected means everything transforms. Everything starts healing. You start letting go of what you don't need anymore. It's just amazing. So the reason why they're working with you, working on the values with you is because you're helping to rescript those values and to align it with something that's timeless. You see, in religion, in these things, you always have principles. But a lot of people don't understand what the principles are. So they think all this beliefs are principles as well. And that's where they get stuck. If you understand principles, then you can consciously choose what beliefs serve you and don't serve you. And there's a lot of beliefs in everything that you're taught that might not serve you. So being aware of principles, you now have choice that that belief doesn't serve me. Because if you can see the effect of it impeding your life, impeding your full expression, impeding your intimacy, your effortlessness, all that stuff, then there's some beliefs there that are not serving you. Yeah. And if you collapse them with principles, you won't let go of them. You'll be like, no, I can't let go of this belief because I was taught this was a principle. Well, most beliefs are not principles. So I'm, hel- I'm sure you're helping to rescript their values so that they can let go of beliefs that no longer serve them because they're not principles. And you can sure them up by teaching them principles to say, that's okay, this is the principle. This is why you'll be okay if we let go of that belief. And they can just watch and see how it's done. I you know I know for myself. So prior to the work that we that we started, you know, five plus years ago, um, I wasn't even thinking in terms of principle, but I was I was behaving as if my beliefs were principle. Well said, and that's what most of us do, because we are never aware of principles versus beliefs. I like to say beliefs are like shirts, you know. If you keep a shirt on so long, you might start thinking it's your skin until you come along someone saying, listen, Matthew, yeah. that shirt you've been rocking since 1970, it's not kind of flowing right now. It's, it doesn't fit you real well. It's got some holes in it. You know what I mean? It's just not creating the <laughs> impact you want. You know, yeah. it's like you don't have to keep wearing it. You're like, what do you mean? This is my skin? I'm like, no, nah, that's your shirt. You're like, nah, they told me it's my skin. I haven't taken this off ever. I'm like, well, uh, and that's what beliefs are. It's like, yeah. no, nah, that's your shirt. If it's not serving, you can take it off and put another one on and watch what happens. When you put on a different shirt, all of a sudden you feel different. It's kind of like a suit. If you put on a nice outfit suit, it just shifts the energy of your body. And all of a sudden it shifts how people relate to you. Everything shifts. 
Absolutely. And that's what values and beliefs are. You create them according to the impact. But it's important to understand what your skin is so you can take off the shirt and put on different shirts and feel very comfortable, you know, the, dif- the difference between your skin and your shirt. And so that's why it's important to understand principles because most people are too afraid to, to venture on beyond where there's comfort, security, there's a stake, there's, there's something that can anchor them. It's so scary to venture off to new beliefs and let go of old beliefs. So principles are the anchor to say, listen, regardless of how far we go, we will always be anchored through source because you and I don't create principles. God does. Universal all does, whatever you want to call it. So that kind of keeps you anchored as you take on new adventures. And it's humbling in such a non-intimidating way. You know, like sometimes for me, the idea of being hum- humbled, I'm like, I don't want to be humbled because that means I'm going to have to go through some stuff. But I've, I've felt that understanding what principles are connecting with principles, aligning with principles, and then seeing where I've misaligned, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. And that That's like the, the humbling part, like, got it. I see why this didn't work. This didn't work because I was clearly misaligned with principle, thinking that it that my values or my beliefs were truth. Mm-hmm. And here's where I completely deviated. I, did, I went against consciousness creates, and wow, I was frustrated with my result. So in those moments, I'm, I can... It doesn't bruise my ego to be humbled by principle in those moments. And I've felt that in the past, like that idea of, of being humbled or, or the idea of connecting with that higher truth, like there was a lot of fear in those things. And so now the relationship for me, at least, is different. I think you said it best, and that's where I was going to lead to next. The biggest game that we're playing, and it's always been the biggest game, but it looks like a myriad of different things over the years, but it's love versus fear. It really is. That's the biggest game. Because at the core of everything, it boils back down to, am I going to operate out of love in this moment or out of fear in this moment? And that's another thing that cannot be debated when you're operating out of it. When you're operating out of love, there's a certain energy that moves through you. When you operate out of fear, there's a certain energy that moves through you. And because people are so secure with their beliefs that are not working, as soon as you go to disrupt them, what do you think comes up, love or fear? Total fear. (laughs) Total fear. A whole lot, Yes. I mean, and just speaking from experience, absolutely, because it's uncomfortable because you don't want to you don't want to wear something new on because your world has been constructed around these beliefs that you thought were truth and principle. And you think that your world is going to end or have to be totally rewritten or come crashing down if you adopt a new belief. And so I've been playing this game a long time and I still watch how you throw something new at me and this fear comes up real quick and it's like. Okay, let me let go of that. My goal is to operate the majority of the time out of love. I'm not here to be perfect at all. My goal is to, my modus operandi is love. And so it gives me room to be challenged by new things and say, okay, that fear came up in a split second, but how do I relate to it? And did I operate out of it? And did I get back to that love and that surrender? So it's just a big game. And that's what I've been able to do to constantly increase my, my mastery around getting back to love instantaneously. And that's what masters are. It's not that you won't, experience fear when new things come up, new ideas, is you will, the masters, get back to a quick thing to get off it. That's it. And that's the big game. And that's what this game, your day balance game, is presents you with a lot of challenges. So you can turn over all those stones where there might have been fears that you weren't even aware of, and there's a whole lot, and start dissolving them. As you dissolve those fears, your state of energy raises up. Your calibration raises naturally as a byproduct of dissolving fears. You just dropped like a dozen amazing things. I want to go back to one thing you just said, that mastery is about getting back on quicker. That's it. Because I, I know there's, there's people out there right now who are thinking that if I get off, I'm, I failed. And what you're saying is, no, it's not about getting off. It's like you, you might get off. It's about how quick you get back on. You'll be off 97% of the time. Yeah, that's how it works. Stephen Covey says the best in seven habits. He says... When you're flying from Atlanta to New York, he says 90% of the time the pilot's off and all he does is correct because he's getting feedback. And so he corrects and he always makes it to New York. So once you realize that you'll be off 90% of the time, you stop fearing being off. And you start playing to be on and that's it. And that shifts everything. Everything shifts in that moment when you get it. (laughs) You know what's funny? There's longtime listeners who are like, Matthew said all this stuff 
like so many times because there's like this is this is why I wanted to bring Day on the podcast because so many things that I've talked about from you know love versus fear from what it looks like to be principle centered from even the example of the plane flying from one location to another is like this is the man that first spoke those things in to me that I I really thought about internalized and then you know brought him to the podcast so if you're kind of thinking some of this sounds familiar there's a reason why you know and if we go back to the beginning of the show and you ask what is having it all to me and yeah. I say it's creating PC generated profit that's purposeful that means you're so on point in your self mashing your reps in your lifestyle that you cut back to that principle over and over again you use principles to make the majority of your choices and you surrender to what the outcome is and through that surrender profit flows production flows people show up wealth shows up as to what level you can get it to flow being so powerful in your principle and being so centered and that's a challenge because I've rarely seen somebody create a high-level profit being PC-centered. Most people I've seen create high levels of profit is because they were using some of the other centers that for years people have used to create wealth, You know, whether it's business-centered, yeah. work-centered, uh, religion-centered, in churches. You know, I've seen it all. People create wealth all kinds of ways, but I haven't seen too many people become very wealthy from PC-centered. That means what's driving them is principles. So you said that and what I what I took from what you said was that a large part of being able to ultimately create those profits, whatever it is that you want to create, maybe it's financial profits or other things, uh, surrendering to principle is a big component of that. And you use the word surrender. All right. Surrender is something that I have that I am I'm just constantly challenged with. But I in you, I've seen incredible amounts of surrender. Teach me in this podcast right now like what are those things that that allow you that help you to surrender to those to what you know is more powerful even though the act of surrendering i don't know i I don't know what like i don't know what might go on in in your mind but i've just seen an incredible amount of surrender in you from the game day experiences to things going down with family to entrepreneurial ventures i just i'm constantly amazed and then inspired by your by your surrender thank you surrender so faith you know when we talk about the six f's the six frameworks we say the number one is faith and the way we define faith in this game is trust and surrender if you want to see someone that has a high level of faith in anything you don't have to be religious to have a high level of faith but that's typically what you associate to religion high level of faith which is great because they do have faith when you see someone has a high level of faith Two things look for. Where are they constantly surrendering and where are they truly trusting? And so then we break down surrender to two things got to constantly happen in your practice for there to be surrender. That's allowing and letting go. Where are you allowing? You know, and where are you letting go? I read in one of Stephen Covey's books that he signed the foreword on. It says, it says, it talks about allowing is the is the principle the first principle of community something like that it's like huge it's like wow to allow is the first principle of community if you're gonna build a big community you have to allow a lot of things to be what they are and not what you think they should be all the time so where are you allowing things to be as opposed to always trying to control it to be what you think it should be and that's that's whooping my ass daily yet i love the game and that's why you see me, it's all a game to me. And the more I allow, the more I surrender. And the more I let go, I surrender. So letting go, you know, we're so attached to so many things. How can you let go and let it flow, you know, and, and let it be? So letting go and allowing are the two things you really want to see. The practices show up in people's life to see if they're truly surrendering. Because they say they're surrendering and they don't have day-to-day practice of allowing and letting go. Then it's talk. It's hype. Letting go and allowing. What are your what's your day daily practice of allowing and letting go? I mean, in this case, I'm always I, I got to do it every day because I have such powerful players around me. In my mind, I envision what it looks like to to focus on one thing and move the game forward. At the same time, everybody has what lights them up, you know, and so creating a space of allowing them to be authentic in their voice. 
and to step forward and say, this is what I would like to do. This is what lights me up. That's a daily thing for me to allow, allow it to unfold the way it's going to unfold without having a preconceived idea of how it should unfold. That means how are we going to move this game forward so that a billion people are aware of it? It's, it's stop thinking about it should be like this anymore. I've let go of that thought a long time ago. I'm like, well, I'm just going to allow the players to show up the way they show up to be who they choose to be. And I'm going to let go of these preconceived ideas of what it should be daily, daily to allow it to be what the universe has in store because I already put the order in. So now it's going to take true faith to see if I truly trust the universe and trust the way it's going to deliver. And it's usually greater than you can ever imagine. So my daily practice is hearing the choices people are making to move their businesses forward and things like that and just constantly sit in a space of allowing, constantly sitting in a space of allowing and letting that to be, you know, in my heart, in the space I hold inside from what they don't hear me say. Like, okay, allow. And then letting go of any time frame, letting go of any way it should look and just being attuned with that energy, that love, that harmony, that allowing, that surrender, that faith and trust in that's already happened. Did that give you some idea of what I do daily as far as internal yeah, work? Absolutely. And it's funny that the alarm went off because that's an example of me not surrendering. That, that alarm was to signal that, hey, it's six o'clock, so it's play camp time as opposed to just allowing this conversation to flow. Okay. So that's funny that, that you know, it's, it's apropos that it goes off in that moment because just letting things be as opposed to trying to control, hey, let's have a powerful conversation within 45 minutes. It's like, no, nah, this conversation is going to unfold the way it's going to unfold. Wow. Another example is I have so many amazing players around me, and, you know, I coach. All I do all day, I, all day I give feedback and coach. So you give some of these players and close people, family members, wisdom, and you say, okay, this is what you come to me for. You say, how do I create this result? And you give them the process in order to create it, and they come up with every idea in the book why they shouldn't be doing it, why does it have to look this way, what, I mean, it goes deep, and (laughs) so at that point, I've got to let go, I've got to let go, it's like, I can't be more attached to your beautiful vista and your your outcome, I can't be attached to it, because you might not ever get there, you might be so stuck, I've got to let go you ever getting it, and that's a daily practice, you know, the space I hold for people is so deep and so profound, so profound that if I'm not letting go them ever getting it, it'll destroy me. How much I really would love them to get it. Uh, you know what just came up for me when you said that? You know, you talked, you talked a little bit earlier about people taking on new things in their lives, taking on kids, taking on jobs and, and things like that. Um, the idea of surrender for me is like the more stuff that you take on in your life, the more surrender you want to be utilizing if you're truly going to have it all most people don't do that the more they take on the more they hold on to and yeah. that's what destroys them every time that's when they show up here they want me to give them a diet or a routine and i can never make up for the level of your attachment yeah and your misalignment and so that's why you say in this game 20 percent of your results is fitness 30 percent is lifestyle and that includes nutrition and 50 percent is consciousness it's your awareness of your relationship to everything are you attached to it or are you simply a conduit allowing your wealth and what you create to flow through you and never being attached to it? Will you truly be whole and complete whether you have it or not? A lot of people talk it, but a lot of people never really get to that state because as soon as it's time to let go of things that no longer serve you, you see the level of attachment. Oh, yeah. You know, it made me think of um, the Matrix, right? Like, I know for a lot of transformations I wanted to make, whether it was physical, emotional, mental, I wanted to just take a pill. Right. To be presented with an option, like, let's just take a pill and and then you're just in a whole new state of being. But you can't take a pill that's going to allow you to release attachments Ooh. like there's <laughs> a process to that, you know, getting you to the space where you're at right now, where you aren't enjoying the experience that you're having. It took time to get there. Well, if you and I come up with that pill, that's a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You take this pill, all attachments go. I mean, jeez. <laughs> I'm sure there's there's folks out there who are who have tried and who will make claims like that. And I know I know uh uh drugs for me was it was a version of that because when I was high, I wasn't thinking about the things that I was so attached to, which is funny because then I ended up forming an attachment to the drug. Boom. <laughs> Get to the other way. 
Yeah. There's no shortcut. That was a, that's what I was going to say. It's like, either way, you'll become attached to that substance. So totally. that's hilarious. So it's a practice, and there's no shortcut to it. And nobody can outsmart it. I love the fact that there's so many geniuses that sat in my chair or sat in your chair and talked to me over the years. And I'm like, geniuses, you know, there's many different forms of genius, but most people understand gen- genius from a, stan- a standpoint of mental, like mentally smart. And if you don't focus, and that's what I love about what you're doing in your next 30-day challenge, you're getting them to focus on all five of their wheels. But if you don't focus on your mental, your emotional, your social, your physical, and your spiritual, if you don't focus on all five, then focusing on one will take you out. And that's my biggest challenge when I coach people. It's like their mental is so strong, they're not willing to let go of it. And it stops them from really becoming fully powerful because your mental will can't carry all five. Yeah. I know that I've, like, I can be in my head a lot, you know, and I know that for me, I've, I've felt like my mental wheel could carry it all. Well, and it's not hard to measure the outcome of it. You know, I see it in a lot of less than powerful relationships, intimacy, things like that is when your mental wheel is carrying it all, uh, you're just not going to be as masterful in your emotions, you know, and there's books out there. They say, probably 60 to 70% of your success, your success is emotional mastery, not mental mastery. I get it. I get it. I mean, so many of the things that we've talked about, whether it's in a COI or in one-on-one conversations, is about the emotions. It's about how I'm relating to all of it, right? It's about, it's about all of that stuff. So, Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Discover new opportunities together in a new Chevy. Meet up in an Equinox, winner of the J.D. Power Award for initial quality among compact SUVs. Lend a hand in the strong and capable Silverado, or mix it up in a high-tech Trax with an available 11-inch diagonal touchscreen. Find family, friends, and fun in the Chevy that's right for you. Click to learn more. Chevrolet, together let's drive. For J.D. Power 2023 U.S. initial quality study award information, visit jdpower.com awards. All right, let's take it back to your definition of having it all, the PPC that has the purpose. Because we talked a little bit about uh, the P, we talked a little bit about the PC, we talked about surrender. Um, Purpose is interesting. I actually have an Instagram post that I'm going to read to you that brings up this idea of purpose. And I think a lot of people are, they struggle with what is my purpose and feel pressure to understand their purpose. And then here you are saying, in order to have it all, there has to be a purpose component to it. So talk to me about what, what is the purpose piece for you and, and, and how you define having it all. Purpose is, you know, there's many different types of purpose. You know, my purpose could be to create the greatest bomb in the world and blow things up, call it Hiroshima. And that was your purpose, to create it. So purpose doesn't necessarily have to serve humanity in an empowering way. It can, you can have many different purposes, and it can be notorious. <laughs> still purpose yeah. you know some people could say you know my purpose is to bring this havoc to the world and create a disruption like this you know so i'm clear purpose for me is when it serves when it's a win-win for humanity when it's a win-win for you when it's a win-win for for life and your planet so everything is is improved upon is healed is is moving towards health not healed but it's moving towards health it's moving towards vibrating higher and a faster, more powerful entity. So purpose is serving, first of all, when we say PC, generated profit, you're already taking care of the golden goose because that's you. When you're PC-centered, part of that is taking care of the golden golden goose. That's part of being principle-centered, is realizing that the eggs come from the golden goose. If you don't have that in part of your principles, then you're missing a big principle. The eggs come from the golden goose. So if the golden goose is not taken care of first, if the oxygen mass is not put on you first, then the eggs will soon dwindle, period. You don't have to argue about that. So you're taken care of. From that standpoint, purpose is when you can transfer that and use that gift, that conduit, that resource. You now become a resource for others to help others 
take care of themselves by setting an example. Teach them how to take care of themselves and empower themselves to feel great, to experience life powerfully, and to create what their dreams are. So that's purpose. Is you, Now you're both winning. You're setting an example. So them watching you is inspiring you to keep going. And they're becoming PC-centered and really starting to really learn how to love themselves. Like I said earlier, it gets back to love versus fear. So spending more time loving yourself. At that point, others are moving. Family, that's what you start off with. What is your, your core family, whether you're married or your brothers and sisters, all that's part of your family. Are they being enlightened by who you're being? Because they still have to choose. You know, They might not choose, but are you still holding a powerful space and example for them? From there is community. It's how can I serve my community? How can I put things together so the community thrives? You know, Your local community, your state, things like that. And from there, am I conscious about how I impact the planet? Because everything communicates, everything creates. So am I here to love this planet because this planet is loving me? So to me, that's what purpose is. When you think about who I'm being and what I'm creating in this world, does it serve my community? Does it serve my family? Does it serve the planet? And if it doesn't, and it just serves your pocket and it sounds great and it's neutral, then you have to, Ask yourself, am I back to principle or am I justifying what I want to experience by my values? And that's a tough thing. Why why does, per, like, your definition of purpose sounds huge. That, you know, for me to act in my purpose, I have to be impacting humanity, right? Like, that sounds like, okay, well, I got to gotta quit my job, obviously. I got to change all this stuff because what I'm doing is not impacting humanity, like, to me, that's, that feels big. Can can purpose be like, I just want to be the most amazing father that I can be, right? So like, talk to me about that because I know there's people out there who are listening who what they feel resonates purpose-wise isn't necessarily something that is, they aren't thinking about how does this benefit the earth. It's like, I want to be, you know, I want to be a loving person. I want to be a compassionate person. I want to show up for my friends and my family, and it's it maybe might feel a little bit more intimate their their idea of purpose rather than like I gotta impact the world. Great question. That's why they come to you for this coaching, so you can give them clarity about this, uh, and that's why I keep that's why I keep encouraging your listeners to come to you for this coaching. When you improve yourself, the world shifts. Everything is connected. Nothing's separate. It's a delusion to think you're separate from everything. And a lot of us live in that delusion because no one's ever taught them that everything is connected. Mm. In Power Versus Force, you have a quote. He says, the universe holds its breath as you choose moment to moment what pathway you're going to head down. The moment you start loving yourself, the vibration of the world shifts. So you don't have to get caught up in how does this look in the world. It all connects. And no, as soon as you start with yourself, the world shifts. So when you're loving yourself and you say, I want to be a great father and love myself and example with my son, you're shifting the world. Yeah, yeah. Your purpose is huge. So it all connects. You shift yourself, your family shifts. Your family shifts, the world, the community shifts. The community shifts, the world shifts. It happens automatically. You don't have to worry about all that stuff. As you play bigger games, you can start taking on the thought of it. But all you got to do is start loving yourself and being an example. So... I love I love that response, and uh, I really didn't know where you were going to go with that. Uh, that, that. That was really cool. Um, this is inspired, like that type of question was inspired um, actually by a listener. His name is Mark. Mark reached out to me on Instagram, and he sent me um, this message, which is a, a quote, and he wanted to get my perspective on it. Um, I gave him my perspective on Instagram. Now I'm going to read this and, uh, and, and kind of hear your thoughts. Um, this quote is from a woman named uh, Sally Coulter, C-O-U-L-T-E-R, and what she says is, it's messing people up, this social pressure to, quote-unquote, find your passion and, quote-unquote, know what it is you want to do. It's perfectly fine to just live your moments fully and marvel as many small and large passions, many small and large purposes, enter and leave your life. For many, there is no realization, no bliss to follow, no discovery of your life's purpose. This isn't sad. It's just the way things are. Stop trying to find the forest and just enjoy the trees. So when I read that, I was like, that's interesting. And, you know, I, I shared my thoughts with Mark, and we've been talking about purpose, right? We've been talking about P and PC that's connected to purpose. And here this, this person is, um, Sally, is saying, like, 
no for, for a lot of people there's no discovery of your life's purpose and that's okay so what comes up for you because i know there's folks who re, who read or hear sally's words and find comfort in that like okay it's all right if i don't know what my passion is if there isn't some big thing i want to do in the world or, or a huge way i want to serve people it's okay because you know this person is in their opinion is telling me it's okay I think we get caught up in the word huge. You know what I mean? Nothing has to be huge for it to be significant, powerful, and impactful. Mm. You know, sometimes the smallest things are most impactful. It's like you could have been the father to this one person that shifted the world. And the way you love that person is the reason why they took it to the world. That is huge. You know what I mean? But it was yeah. something. It didn't look huge, but yeah, it was huge. So let's not get caught up in what huge is. I, like to I know say, I do. Because I, I, I think I was the one who put the qualifier of huge in there. But that is huge. It just depends on how you look at it. Yeah. So I just don't want to get caught up on what it looks like, but it's still huge to be the father of somebody who took it to the world because the space you held and the love you gave them, they didn't have to go through that whole breakdown and all that stuff because you just set it off. That is, That's dope. That is just magical. So back to your question. I often have this question. I'm like, is purpose discovered or uncovered? Mm. And the answer is both. So you don't have to debate it. I like to say purpose is like this. If you're ever walking, if you're walking through a forest and all of a sudden you come to a clearing and you see this beautiful garden, you know what I mean? Is it yours? I mean, the the, the fruit, the vegetables, everything is in line. It's beautiful. It's flourishing. You got all this and it can feed many. You're like, wow. And you don't see anybody around. Is it yours? No, probably not because you didn't plant that. You didn't grow that. You know what I mean? And that's what purpose is. Purpose is like a garden, you know, and and when it hits full bloom, it serves so many, including yourself, whatever that looks like. I mean, it's going to serve more than one. As long as it serves more than one, that's great. It's not just serving yourself. So most of the times, a garden is not just discovered. Yes, you discovered it because you walked across it, but you have to learn how to plant gardens. So if you get around people who teach you how to plant gardens, you know, and that's what a purpose is, is it's learning how to put certain ingredients together because everybody has gifts. And that's what we talk about. And that's when, when people call you and you help them write their mission statement, what they're getting in it because it's part of this teaching is that you want to make sure your mission statement, your purpose statement includes your gifts and your talents. And when we say your gifts are things you're just born with. It's like you, you shrug your shoulders. You're like, I just can always do it. Yeah. Talents are things that you repped. You said, I want that in my repertoire. And you just repped it. 10 years later, someone came along and you're like, nah, I, I spoke two languages five years ago. I only spoke one. You're like, what? You know, you're just talented at it. Then passion, you know, you want to make sure your purpose statement has passion. So well, there's a lot of things you're passionate about, many things. So throw that little ingredient in there. And that's what a garden is. It's little ingredients, a little of this, a little of that. So you have your talents and gifts with your passion. You want to make sure it contributes to others in a significant way because you can contribute to others. It, you can take away from others and what you do. So you want to make sure this adds to others. Be very intentional because if you don't pay attention, it can take away from others. And you want to make sure that it compensates you in a sustainable way. Because a lot of people write purpose statements where they totally exhaust themselves and they're dead. That's, you I've know? heard those. I've, I've and, read some of those. Yeah. And the last thing is you want to make sure it's aligned with principles. Because principles are inexhaustible. Yeah. That means you don't have to rely on yourself. The lines of principle, you just lay, lay back on that principle and it flows right through you. You put those ingredients in there and you will come across and you will create your purpose. Everybody can do it. No questions asked. So I hear that. And that's one perspective for those who feel I can't. Nah, nobody. What God has blessed us all with, God has blessed us all with. And if you're truly intentional about it and you truly choose it, you have talents and gifts. You have passions. You have contribution to others. You have ways you like to be served, and you can align with principles. And you just got to let it bake. You let it come together until one day your gardens bloom. And when someone comes across and they thought it was always there, you're like, nah, that was repped. And that's what this game's about. Mm -hmm. You're where you're at because you repped this shit. That's dope. I love that. That's cool. Uh, I always appreciate you, Day. Like, I can just throw stuff at you. And, and, uh, I don't know. You just you just flow with things. Um, I want to circle it back and kind of wrap it up with, like, for your PPC creation that is purposeful. What does it look like? 
what is that for you? Because we talked a lot about the elements of it and what it makes up, but what does it look like for you specifically? Most of the time, you don't know what that garden is going to look like until it blooms and it comes out, and you just don't know. You just got. That's why faith is so important. You got to say, you got to keep asking yourself, is my talents and gifts in there? Is my passion? And let it do what it does. It's always going to come out greater than you can ever expect it. I did not have any vision of being where I'm at today years ago because this kind of career and this kind of position wasn't taught, you know, yeah. as a lifestyle coach through health and fitness. You know, that's not really a career or a trainer. That wasn't a career back when I was growing up. So I thought I was going to be an engineer, electrical engineer, things that you're taught, you know. So I started putting it together, and then this is what came out because I kept following what my body, what my attunement was telling me. What does it look like for me? Now that it's fully baked and it's come out, it's pretty amazing. Is my goal is to really create personally, is to create PC leaders. That's what I want to create. That's what I love creating, PC leaders, that people who lead their organizations, their families, their schools, everything off principle centered, and they're willing to be held accountable to it. And that's what a game does. The game gives you a measurement tool to hold you accountable, to say if you're a PC leader, it starts off with self. It starts off with your production capability. Because the more principle-centered you are, which is PC, also means, means production capability, the more you're able to produce because it's not just you. You're flowing off source. So my intention, what does it look like, is creating 10,000 PC leaders. You know That means people who are different types of coaches, such as yourself, who use the tools of the game to transform people's lives. From that, they enroll thousands and millions of people to play the game, like just to get on and use the balance chart and just play so they can hold themselves accountable. And from that, they inspire a billion people to watch. So all of a sudden, this health and fitness philosophy is impacting a billion people. That's what it looks like for me and raising their calibration so that the world raises its calibration. Right now, according to David R. Hawkins, the world calibrates right around 207 out of 1,000. So I'd like to know that I lived and this game was part of the part of what raised the calibration of the world to 235, you know, or 250, which is, which takes centuries. Yeah. But if yeah. we, with a game like this and the fact that the world's flat in technology, it doesn't have to take centuries to raise the points to 25 points from now, like from 207 to, you know, 230 something. And keep in mind, like you said earlier, most people only go five points their whole life in calibration. So I love it because the game will raise your calibration You've jumped up hundreds. Yeah, That's why you're impacting <laughs> people the way you're impacting. That's what they say. If you can get past the 200, you can jump up hundreds. I've watched you jump up hundreds. So that's what it looks like to me. It's creating more of you, people who, who are ready to lead the masses in their own unique way, which you've done. So I'm so inspired by what you're doing, and I, and I pray that you have – Many more people coming to you to coach them on becoming PC centered, and uh, call Matthew uh, and get get on it. He's going to walk you through becoming PC centered. Yes, I appreciate you, Day. Um, this conversation was very cool personally for me to be on this side of the mic because you've interviewed me on your podcast, the Make Every Day Your Day podcast, um, and that was a great experience. And you have walked with me as this show has grown its legs over the past two and a half years. And, you know, as you said at the top, you were there in the the COI where we were coming up with the ideas and where the name Having It All came from. And, you know, you were there helping, you created the acronym ALL, Abundant Loving Life. Like there's so many, like your hands are all in this. And so to now have you on the podcast is tremendous. So I, I appreciate you so much for who you are who you have been for yourself for me for the community and just who you continue to be because you know we talked about this um i think last week the difference between being inspired and being motivated and i truly have been inspired by by you and being in your energy and being in your presence because being around you and that energy has gotten me to take action. And that's where the inspiration is. Like there's an action component as opposed to, I just feel great when I'm in your energy. No, by watching you and being around you, I've been like, damn, that's what it looks like to surrender. That's what it looks like to come from love. That's what it looks like to live through principle. All right, 
I'm going to now act and shift some things. So, Day, I appreciate you for, for who you, you, you are, and I appreciate you for just hanging out with me for the last, I don't even know, 45 minutes. Well, I'm humbled, um, as you always do. Give me an opportunity to look back on myself and stay humbled. I will say that I'm very inspired by who you and your wife are becoming. Like, you guys are so rare. I've worked with thousands of people, and I can't think but a handful that's made it this far, if that has made it this far. So I don't think you'll realize how far you made it until maybe 10 years from now of the impact that you have in, in the world and how far you've come in your self-mastery. So, but I think uh, you're getting affirmations about it from the impact you have in your podcast. You're starting to really see that you're a very rare breed, very, very, very rare. And I, and I sit here just smiling because, you know, very few people make it this far in their self-mastery. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm humbled. Um, and I'd go through 10,000 people again to see one of you manifest from it. Yeah. yeah. You and Sarah really make, make it worth it. And that's, that's like investments. You might have to invest a lot and see a lot of things not pan out, you know, but if you get one or two that strike at home, it makes up for everything and more. So that's who you and Sarah are for me. And, uh, and I just, I let go and allow, you know what I mean? Cause I've been in playing this game for over 20 years and I can never be attached to any of it. You know what I mean? None of it can't be attached to none of it. So you guys are too powerful. You can make choices at any moment in time. So I'm just going to enjoy you today and love you fully today. Thank you. Mm, I received that. I appreciate it. Thank you day. And for everyone listening, I want you to do two things. I know you dig podcasts cause you're listening to this podcast. So day has a daily podcast podcast called the make every day your day podcast seven days a week day gets behind the mic and he delivers just everything that we talked about in this last however long times 10 go check it out it's on itunes google play all that stuff i know because i produce it day's the man behind the mic i'm the man who's getting everything published so go check it out that's the make every day your day podcast that's the first thing i want you to do the second thing is if you are in the Atlanta area and can come and just be in the energy of, of day in the Your Day Playground, great. Hit me up. I'll give you the address so you can come by. If you can't, the next best thing is to watch day on the Balance Chart app so you can see how this man is living. You can see his habits day in and day out. And to do that, go to theydbg.com, download the app, go check out day, go follow him, go watch him, on the Ordi Balance Game app. His name is spelled D-A-Y-A-D-E-O-G-B-A. Guarantee you'll be influenced by seeing the habits that Day is posting day in and day out. And man, once again, appreciate you, Day. Love you. Man, I love you too, man. I like to add this to it. It's amazing how magic comes back because this podcast would not exist if it wasn't for Matthew and Sarah. So just to watch him become a masterful uh, podcaster and, and hold me accountable to it and hold that space for me and just create this space for me, uh, I can't express to you the win-win. Like this podcast exists because of Matthew and Sarah. So they're holding me to the fire. I thank them. Make every day your podcast wouldn't exist right now if it wasn't for them. Send uh, paving the road and holding me accountable to it and just making it happen. So, man, that's life. It just mm -hmm. keeps coming back tenfold. I'm so thankful to you. I love you. And watch Matthew and Sarah on the BG2. Those are the realest players ever. <laughs> All right, Dave. This has been this has been real, man. I appreciate you. I love you, man. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? 
Like, are you a fist pumper, a woo a hand clapper, a high-fiver? I kind of like the high-five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At ChumbaCasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino-style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses, so don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.